In previous lectures, we learned about some of the challenges faced by indigenous local and scientific communities when it comes to building highly sensitive telescope sites. In this lecture, we are going to explore what best practice might look like when trying to respectfully engage with local communities. When looking to protect indigenous rights, international law has developed processes and standards to enable respectful and meaningful partnerships between two or more parties in the decision-making process. Most noteworthy is a process called free, prior and informed consent that was formed from a combination of the United Nations Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, the International Labour Organization Convention and the Convention on Biological Diversity and describes why it is vital for the self-determination of Indigenous peoples to seek their consent, not just consultation when it comes to activities on their land. So looking more in depth at this process, the FREE stands for um, the seeking of consent from people with rights or interests in a site without coercion or manipulation or intimidation. The prior means that consent is sought before any development has taken place and they're engaged at a time uh, and, and given a reasonable amount of time uh, in order to come to their decision. Informed acknowledges that all relevant information um, that is required in order to make an informed decision must be given freely to the participants um, who you're seeking consent from. Uh, and lastly, we have the consent word. And this is a process that the decision makers must go through to determine whether uh, they approve, disapprove, or you know, even approve with conditions um, of the activity that is being proposed. Consent must be a collective decision from all of those parties who have rights and interest in the site. And consent can also be revoked or altered at any time in the process. So in short, FPIC enables Indigenous peoples with rights or interest in a site or in land to negotiate under the conditions um, or negotiate the conditions under which the proposed project will be designed, implemented, monitored and evaluated. The successful implementation of FPIC is a bottom-up approach that enables collaboration, co-design and co-ownership uh, between Indigenous peoples and any organisation. We've already seen an example of FPIC and co-design being successfully implemented when we explored the enterprise agreement between uh, the Square Kilometre Array and the Wadjuri Yamachi people that saw key sites of cultural significance protected from being damaged by the construction of the SKA Observatory. Aside from the FPIC process, there are also important principles that can be embedded in a project from its inception. Some of these we have already mentioned, such as co-design, which prioritizes the design of a project to be informed and led by both parties, which leads to co-ownership, meaning that both parties have ownership over the project. Another vital part of building sustainable and ethical scientific facilities is to make sure the site's construction is consistent with local values and needs. Yeah, so I think a really wonderful example of this is um, coming from Alice Springs here in Central Australia. There is a satellite monitoring organisation called the Centre for Appropriate Technology. The Centre is an Aboriginal owned uh, science and technology organisation designed to track the influx of satellites in low Earth orbit. Pretty cool. The data collected by the centre will contribute to scientific research, it will inform commercial projects, uh, and it monitors the environments both on the land and in the sky. Notably, the station will provide high resolution imagery of the land in real time, offering a really significant improvement for things like disaster management, uh, such as bushfires or cyclones. So the organisation, they also do this really wonderful thing where they release regular newsletters 
uh, and they share their technical expertise with anyone who's interested. Uh, they call this newsletter Bush Tech, uh, and they cover topics uh, such as how to fix a leaking tap or how to reduce household energy use. Overall, the centre provides culturally relevant services to the local, national and scientific communities by monitoring country, whilst also offering Aboriginal Australians first-hand experience uh, and an al also an opportunity to make contributions to the very fast-growing Australian space sector. So respectful relationship building can make scientific facilities accessible, relevant and ethical, helping to ensure the facility's success into the future.